Hi right, guys, this week I'm down at Cottingham Lakes and I'm fishing on Lake Christine. I've come down with a few guys from work and we've taken the week off work to come and relax. Oh, just had a liner on one of my rods. Right, so we're at Lake Christine. Uh, it's about three and a half acres in size and it's stocked with a good head of 30s up to about 37 pounds. Varies in depth from about four foot right down at the far end of the, uh, near the car park right up to where we are at about six foot in the middle. I'm fishing currently two rods to the island and Andy in the swim next to me is fishing two rods straight out into the middle of the lake. We've only just got set up, we've only just arrived but already we're starting to see some promising signs, we're starting to get liners and we're starting to see bubbles coming up, a bit of fizzing coming up on the spots. So I don't think it'll be too long before we're into our first fish. So it went a little bit quiet this afternoon. It's coming on to sort of two o'clock. Thought I'd move my right hand rod just out into open water a little bit. A solid PVA bag. A mix of different size pellets and it's uh it's done the business. Hopefully we get him in. Oh, feel it launching. It's swimming right towards me at the moment. I'll take a minute. Hey, look at that battle curve. Nine foot rod. Oh, just being careful, doing it to pass over Andy's lines. So, didn't take long to get off the mark, but to open the account, 23 and a half pound common. I uh, couldn't really think of a better way to start, really. Had the rods in the water only a few hours getting a little bit tired, started getting my head down and uh, I think a change in tactics paid off. We moved from the island out into the middle of the water to a bit of fizzing, solid PVA bag, handful of baits over the top and uh, this is what came of it. So uh, time to get that rod straight back out and try and get another one. There we go. One final look at her before we send her back. What a way to open the account. I think tonight is going to be a good night. It's a little bit overcast. We got a good temperature, 15 degrees tonight. So, I think it's going to be a productive night. Right, let's get her back. Yes, on to the next one. So only literally two seconds after putting that back, Andy's rods just ripped off. Where did that one come from, Andy? Directly uh, head mate, about two foot off that bush. What, in the corner? Yeah, by the red flower on the bottom. Oh, it's a nice looking common. Probably the same one you just made. <laughs> it was quick to get on that. Okay, so this is my first one I've had in a while and it's uh, broke the drought. It's about 22 2. Uh, caught on a multi rig using a 10mm urban baits pop up. And it was a uh, hook bait, was a uh, urban baits 10mm fluoro pop up. Had a nice bed of nutcracker around it as well. First one for a while, so I'm well chuffed. Off you go, Tiger. 
So we've just got Andy's fish back and I think it's now time to show you that PVA bag that I had my common on. I'm using a medium sized PVA bag and I'm filling it with 6mm pellet and about 4 or 5 different boilies. The key to the bag that I'm presenting is that I'm clipping off the last ring on the hybrid lead clip and I'm putting that in the bag with the 2 ounce lead and poking the ring from the hybrid lead clip through the bottom of the bag. Once I've done that, I'm then using a quick release clip and clipping on my blowback rig. Before I cast it out, I'm also putting in a high-vis pink pop-up. reason for this is when the bag melts, that pop-up's going to come to the top and that's going to give me a really good marker to flick out a few boilies, just to sprinkle over the top. When she's ready to go, I'm going to finally put a good helping of glug into the bag, put the hook through the side of the bag, so I'm going to clip that hook through the side of the bag and then she's ready to go. It's all clipped up at the right distance and hopefully it'll get me another fish. Sorry, but I haven't got anything to show you or report back this morning. After Alex's fish yesterday, I really thought it was going to start fishing well, but it just it just hasn't. I've been up since about five o'clock this morning, watching the water, maybe have a cup of tea. But the fishing that we saw yesterday morning when we arrived, no longer there. I have a horrible feeling that the fish have moved off us and gone down the other end of the lake. But that's the thing with a small lake like this: the fish are going to go where there is no pressure. Plan of action for today, I'm going to leave the rods in at the moment, I'm just going to sit and I'm just going to watch and I'm going to see what's going to happen. If I need to move, I'm going to up and move. If the fish come back into the area, then obviously I'm going to stay. But for now, I'm going to stay put. Hopefully I'll be reporting back to you soon with a fish in my hand. If not, I'll catch you soon and give you an update. So not a lot has happened since I last boat to you. I've had a bream and a few liners, but I've decided to stick to my spots, put out new solid PVA bags, and I think I'm just gonna wait for the fish to come to me. They're clearly moving around the lake, so we're gonna wait and see what happens. In the meantime, I wanna show you how I've been setting up my cameras. It's a big question that was asked on my last trip. A lot of the guys have bought new DSLR Canon cameras, and they were using them all in automatic functions, and for that, you might as well just be using your camera phone. But I'm going to spend the next couple of minutes explaining to you the best way to set up your Canon camera for the first time when you're taking it out on the bank. All right, so on the top, you've got your on and off button. Turn your camera on and then flick the dial round to it says AV. This is your aperture priority. From here, you can control in the amount of light that is coming into the camera by turning the, turning the wheel on the top. By dropping that number, to its lowest setting, so this will go down to 1.4. You're letting loads of light into the camera, and that is focusing on a single point. So where, say for instance, my hand is, one side it will be in focus, the other side will be out of focus. The higher that number, the more will be in focus. The lower that number, the less will be in focus. So if you're taking a picture of you with your fish, or you're taking a picture of a friend with a fish, if you get that number down to say, let's say 2.8, good, good round number to go to, the fish and your subject are going to be in focus, but everything behind him is going to be nicely blurred out. The next thing that we're going to look at is your white balance. So by pushing the Q on the back of the camera to bring up your quick menu, you've got the option to change your white balance. It might be currently set as auto or it might be a daylight or cloudy kind of picture there. Pick the setting which is closest to the environment that you're in. So today we're, we're, quietly, we're quite overcast, so I'm going to pick that cloudy option. And that gives me the closest representation to white. The next bit I'm going to do is I'm going to change my file size. So what are my 
what my picture's recording as. So I shoot in RAW, that gives me the greatest amount of information to edit when I get back home. But if for you guys that just want to upload your images straight to Facebook or Instagram, take it down to JPEG and pick the large format as well. You're going to still record loads of data and you're still going to get a really good clear, crystal clear image that you can upload. Pick your picture style, uh, that's with the, uh, pit, the button on the back is sort of designated by loads of little notches coming out in a round circle. I choose landscape. Being outdoors, I want a landscape style picture, so that is why I'm picking that image. It's sharpening that image just a little bit, but it's leaving the contrast and the saturations at zero. Finally, select your ISO. Now for ease, go to just auto A, pick that, and the camera will do the work for you. But in low light, you might find that there's a lot of noise in the image. So I try not to go above anything above 400 on the ISO. Once you've done that, you're good to go. Take a few pictures. If you need to, up and down on that wheel, change your f-stop, letting more light in and more light out of the camera, changing your focal point as well. All right, so go away, have a play. See how you get on. A bit of a slow afternoon, isn't it? A bit of a slow day, all to be fair, but that is true. Well, the temperature's really got up this afternoon. It's about 18 degrees. I know it's not massive amounts, but it's just been enough to uh, take the fish off the munch. And uh, after a couple of casts, Andy getting the right rig in the right spot, it's done the business. Just goes to show, though, doesn't it? A couple of casts. Yeah. Make sure you get it on the money. I definitely was happy to start with, but I'm glad I've recast it and put it on mm. the actual rolls. Common, um, but I did notice once I removed the hook, slightly t uh, red and bloody inside. So what I'm going to do is use my carp care mouth treatment, give it a good coating. So far it's a uh, counting for one a day. Exactly the same setup as last time. Urban baits pop up and nutcracker 10 mil on a multi-rig. It's done the job.
Morning guys, it's the last morning now. Unfortunately, nothing to report on our side of the bank, but Nick, who's been doing some fantastic cooking for us for the last couple of days, has managed to bag himself a 20 and a 22 pound common, which is unusual because all of us throughout the trip have just had commons. Now they've fought like hell and they've really put up a good scrap, but all of them have been commons. We come here to try and catch a nice scaly mirror. Unfortunately, that hasn't happened yet, but hey, that being said, we've still got another 12 hours to go, so you never know. Right, I think it's time to sit back now uh, get myself a bacon sandwich on and then come up with a plan of action for the day. Well, mate, I just heard your bite alarm go off. Yeah, had two egg pulls, um, unfortunately, but finally managed to land this one. A little consolation after a bit of a nightmare. <laughs> well done. <laughs> yeah, Whereabouts did he come from? Just off the edge of the island, mate. Is that where you had your hook pulls as well? Yeah, literally. Really snaggy around there, so I've given them a bit of welly, and unfortunately, two of them have come off. But I haven't been long, the rod's been out, been out about five minutes. Got this one in the net, fish oh. number three, so They're obviously happy feeding days. on your spot, aren't they? Yeah, getting on it, finally. No, I oh, would well mate, let's get him out and have a look. Yeah. So this one 18 and a half pound, caught in a little snowman rig, uh, Urban Baits Nutcracker, doing the business once again, happy days. Slip her back now, off she goes, time to get the rod back out. Oh, Dutsy has managed his third fish of the trip. Didn't start off the best of a no. best it could go, did it? But he finished <laughs> off on a winner a couple yeah. last night and last in the 12 hours. Yeah. And what did this one tip? Uh, this took the manila and it tipped the scales at 15 half. 15 half. Trusty so, sticky manila. Yeah. Done a yeah, trip on it. What a coker, that. Yeah, nice fish. Pretty, innit? Good, it's in good nick. Mm. Put up a good fight as well. I'm just going to put him down now just so he does. mate. So we've hung it out to the 12th hour now and it's time to go home. I'm going to reel in my rods but We've had a fantastic couple of nights fishing. We've had loads of commons, and Alex earlier had that really nice looking stocky 15 pound, sorry, 17 pound mirror that we had earlier today. Guys, please hit that subscribe button on there. Uh, like us on Instagram and Facebook page as well, and we'll be seeing you again soon. Thanks for watching.